welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me is a man who is currently recording this while riding a moped. It's Jake Lewitt. Hey, Mark. Good to talk to you again. I mean, you're you're impressive, man. You recorded the Piranha 3D one on a jet ski. You recorded a jet ski podcast on a jet ski. And now you're mopeding and recording. I mean... I mean it's gotten to the point where I'm no longer impressed by my actions. <laughs> uh, this is just day to day for me. So you can make a big deal of it if you will, but it's just this is just my life, you know. I don't hear traffic. It's, I don't. It's pretty quiet around there. I mean, it's pretty late late at night. But, but we got some bad weather recently, so the road's been pretty clear. I figured I could hear a whir from the moped. You have a. I mean, this is you know, no bumps, man. How, you're looking at so. You, know, and you have I'm, your I'm, notes with you in one hand, so you're driving with one hand, and you have notes with the other hand. I mean, you think I'm dropping one hand. I have a bottle of water in the other hand. So I'm this is all this is all my thighs. Just I've been been working out with my thighs. It's all <laughs> control on the moped. I'm a no hands. I'm wow. a no hands guy. The oh. the movie sponsor fix podcast does not endorse driving a moped with no hands. Uh but that's all I'm doing. I'm taking wow. my life into my thighs. And I... <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> that's that's you know what? I've been on this earth for 37 years, and I never thought I'd hear that line. So I, <laughs> I'm and after what 250 some episodes of the movies, films, and plot, uh, film, movies, films, and flicks podcast. That's the first time we've ever heard that line. Wow! No, wow. yeah, you should sell t-shirts. Uh, taking my life into my thighs. And it's you <laughs> holding a swim fan DVD with a bottle of water in your other. Yeah, exactly. What do you have? You know, like you know, when back in the day, when you go through a drive-through. And, you know, like a Burger King or McDonald's, whatever restaurant, and they have those BK headsets on, you know, Burger King headsets. Is that what okay, you're talking yeah. into? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, their reception is pretty good. Uh, battery life's decent. So, I mean, it seems to be working so far. Jeez, it, it, wor it works on a jet ski. So I figure it can work on a moped. Wow. And you managed to rip yourself off of that jet ski, too. <laughs> it, it was tough. It was tough. I had to, I, I had to give up that jet ski lifestyle. Uh, it just it was, it wasn't practical to you know get to my job which isn't which is landlocked uh so i just had to i, I picked the next best thing like what, what's a jet ski for the land like what's what's, <laughs> a, what's an impractical relatively slow mode of transport that can still weave its way through bigger things and it's a moped it's gonna be a moped it has to be so dude this is great i love it and you know i'll have a little bit of post-production work but i think it'll be great now i'm, I'm really sorry surprised that. that we finally got <laughs> this is where it all began so <laughs> All right, I, let me give you a little history. I don't think I've ever told you this. So John Lazavath, the original, uh, one of the original co-hosts of this, he, I think he did probably the first 100 episodes. And I used to joke around about Swim Fan ever since it came out, right? Since, what, okay. 2002, he and I have just been joking around about how we're never going to watch Swim Fan, but we've always owned copies of it. So he would just send me a copy of Swim Fan, and it's like, uh, you know, Mark, I now own Swim Fan Hoffmeyer as the delivery address. <laughs> So we had this bit about swim fan. It was kind of like my my old Kramer versus Kramer that I always use now. I'm probably running that into the ground. And have you never seen Kramer versus Kramer? Oh no, I have. But every, okay. like whenever people are like, yeah, it's a great comedy up there with Ace Ventura. Then I'm like, yeah, Kramer versus Kramer. Yeah. yeah. It's like <laughs> so we'd always do swim fan. And one time he sent it to me, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna watch it. So I sat down with my wife Megan, and we watched it. And then I made a joke about it. I was like, I feel like I built it up too much in my head. <laughs> After watching it, and then I pitched it to you about Swim Fan because I have a weird curiosity with this movie. And well, you, you pitched it to me back on the the sports movie draft Lamcast where you picked it. Oh yeah! I think this was your first round pick was yes. Swim Fan. I did pick Swim Fan. And you had a very you had an early pick. It was like one of the first picks in the entire draft was was Swim Fan, and it left uh, myself and the other guests a little dumbfounded, mainly because I I was unfamiliar with Swim Fan. It was not something that I'd, I'd come across my, my way before. Oh, wait, I picked uh, Goon first, right? And then Swim Fan. Yes, yeah, yeah. something like that. But it was, yeah. it was still uh, uh, far earlier in the draft than Swim Fan should have been picked. And that was the uh, what caused the whole soggy saga to, to occur. Because <laughs> you basically said, oh, you have to come on my show and talk about Swim Fan. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then from that, we spawned Lake Placid, Anaconda, Deep Blue Sea, everything else. And we kept <laughs> pushing this one back. You kept pushing this one. But... Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, all right, here's the deal. I, I, I kept my eye on, uh, is it still streaming on Amazon Prime? Is it still streaming? And fortunately, it was. There's... So I didn't have to pay any money. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. You didn't have to run six miles for it. <laughs> Not this time. 
there is a commentary on it with the director, John Polson, and actors, uh, Jesse Bradford and Erica Christensen. And I really didn't want to listen to it because I'm like, what are they going to talk about? But <laughs> they were professional. It was a fun commentary. I actually learned a decent amount from it. And I, I was pretty impressed with a lot of commentaries. Just it's really bad. Like no one wants to talk. There was a conversation through the whole 84 minutes, which I appreciated. But I just was that like, so, you know me, I can't go into a, a podcast without knowing everything I can possibly know. Yes, you and I are very different in that way. And <laughs> I have and, just watched the film. <laughs> and, and I, well, I, 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 I'm so thankful that you did. You're the only person yeah. I've been able to get to do this. But now I, I feel like I'm the scholar on swim fan in the United States, which is weird. A very weird thing. Are there other people clamoring for this title? Do you know? Well, no. And so that's why <laughs> I. Uh, it's yours for the taking. Exactly. But I think there's going to be some swim fan fans out there who are very excited and. Next time when I choose this way too high in a draft, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, swim fan. <laughs> what other draft are you going to pick, swim fan? <laughs> uh, best PG-13 thriller. So we're probably not going to do a Dan Hedaya draft, as much as I might like to. Well, we're doing that in this episode. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah, no, we're doing it. Yeah, no, that's that's our draft for this this round. Okay. But, oh, dear. Why uh, didn't I see that coming? <laughs> if we did this thriller or drama, swim fan, number one. And I'll just okay. make everyone lose, like just want to quit yeah make the podcast uh, go into chaos <laughs> i mean I, I can think of very very few categories where this would be the best film uh, i have some questions for you fire away okay so i have a bunch of bunch of questions for you so okay. our hero in this story <laughs> all right <laughs> i'm unsure who you're talking about ben cronin okay loose he, loose definition of hero when did he <laughs> get into drugs so he's 17 would you say right uh yeah 17 so he spent six months in juvie where he which is when he started swimming or at least started getting into swimming like as well as he did yeah so he he can't have gotten to a stanford scout level of swimming in six months there must have been uh and it's just a, a cop still remember his history so he must have been out of out of juvie for let's say at least a year so he must have been locked up at least 18 months ago. So if he's 17 now, then we're looking at 15 and a half, like 15-ish. When did it but, start? But that, but when this is the thing, when when he uh, gets busted for for taking the steroids later on, his mum says like this is how it started last time. So did he? He must have been doing some kind of a sport beforehand where he was doing performance enhancing drugs. So for it he, to have been caught for that one. So was that swimming or was that something else? Was he doing performing enhancing drugs or was he doing drugs? They just drugs. said drugs, but then but she said this is how it started last time. Oh no, but then, ah, she was being more she was being more generic in terms of like failing at school and things. So uh, so his wife, his oh, mom is a rewind. doctor. His mom's a doctor, right? Yes, and okay. he's a volunteer nurse assistant at the <laughs> hospital. Yeah, and they live in a fluent neighborhood. Okay. Right. So his dad must have done a number on him when he was 12, 13. Remember he said his dad used to cheat on his mom? Yeah. So when his dad left, do you think he went through a rebellious phase and started I... low on drugs and then he started stealing? I think that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and he, they have, uh, he has a very, very big car as well, which yeah. can't be cheap. No. So I'm guessing either his mom earns a great deal as a doctor, which is great for her, or his dad's paying some kind of alimony. Uh, or like child support. So yeah, maybe his dad bought it to kind of curry favor to apologize for the psychological trauma he put his son through that ended up with him having a criminal record. Did he do did he do drugs with Josh, the guy who's always doing the fingers like you know the guy his the his buddy <laughs> oh, swimmer? The, utter asshole. <laughs> the guy who's always doing the hand stuff. So right now I have my hands up in the air and I'm I kinda have him on gun symbols and I'm kinda doing a Yosemite Sam or like I'm kinda like, yo, yo but I have very aggressive hand motions and that's what this guy did. Were they were they like did they run together when they were kids? I, I can see that. I mean, J Josh is a horrible person. He's he's like when he's walking backwards down the hallway, and someone else walks into him, who is walking backwards, and he has a massive go at the guy. And uh, he goes, "Hey!" He screams, "Hey!" at him twice. He does. And the guy just tries to walk away. It's like it's like Christopher. It's it's Madison's cousin, and he's trying to walk away because you know he's doing his own thing. He wasn't walking backwards. Uh, but is, you know, is Josh, Josh wants that a fight? Is Josh on performance enhancing drugs, and that's how Madison is able to get Ben? I don't think he can be because they have the uh, the urine test, and he he doesn't fail it. 
at so, what point does she sneak in performing enhancing drugs into his urine sample? It's a good question. So he's uh, a state swimmer, by the way, if you're listening. So this movie Swim Fan, it's about an obsessive uh, <laughs> woman who falls for a very uh, willing yeah. senior swimmer. It's it's teen fatal attraction. There with it swimming. is. So hey, also I looked up Stanford swimming, and they're number two in the nation right now. Who's number one? Uh, I don't know. I just look for Stanford. <laughs> okay. Hank, Hank University, Rhode Island University is number one. And that's that's where Amy was going to go, Rhode Island. So maybe got... she's a she's a secret swimmer. She's on the the women's team. I feel so bad for Amy in this movie, man. God. Yeah. Like, all right. So th- this movie, all right, it made good money. It made what thirteen million its opening weekend. It took it beat My Big Fat Greek Wedding, which everyone was shocked. Jesus. Yeah, it yeah. made money. And if you add in inflation, you know, it was a, over a $20 million opening, which is pretty big for a swim fan. It cost $10 million. They So they made this as an indie, and then Fox bought it. So this movie was made for $10 million in New York. And then they, I, I listened to the commentary. I know all this stuff. But uh, <laughs> all right, so the, 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 pro- the biggest problem with this movie is that Ben Cronin, his girlfriend seems really cool. Yeah. Like, all right. She's right, so in the beginning scene, it's really creepy. It's just the two of them in their car, like hooking up, right? Yep. All right, and then yeah, very like in front of cars. <laughs> cars are just driving by. So, and then she's really cool to him. She's like, hey, you know, we're going to different. You're actually leaving me because you know I'm going to Rhode Island. You're leaving across the country. I'll go to Berkeley. It's that easy for me, and I'll be yeah. there for you. We can get an apartment. And she works like a late job, and she's in high school. So she knows like responsibility, right? She's always closing the place at two a.m. Yeah, she's 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 a good kid. She knows she's she must be good to go into Berkeley, and you know she's she's dating one of the the hottest sports guys at the school. So she's just got kind of a good reputation at the school. This is she's kind of the all round the all round pack. And like no, I think everyone in the school likes her because she's not rude to anybody. And yeah. then she's also has a job, so she's not like a real you know. Uppity, you know what I mean? Like this seems yeah. pretty cool. But there's, she has, she has. There's no flaws to her or her personality at all. She's just ideal. Yeah, yeah, very underwritten. But I like. Yes. I, I, but you know what though? After spending so much time with this movie, I'm like, I like her. What she did in the role, you feel for. Because at the end, she's a wreck because of this idiot. But all right, they never have a fight, right? They they haven't. She's not. She doesn't have. She's not like this. Rude, she's not cold to him. She's not planning on going to. A, she's planning like on going to a college. He's not going to. He has no reason to be annoyed at her. And that's why when he first meets Madison, it's like one day and she seduces him. I know we're talking about high schoolers. This is really weird. But like th- that Ben folds. Hey Ben folds. Bye. <laughs> oh my gosh. So like that happens so quick. And then you're like, I don't like this guy. Like because no. he's not. There's nothing wrong in his life. So then when he just it's, does that, and then he's like, you know, my my mom got cheated on. I'm like, what does that mean? I don't know how you felt. I, I, I didn't like him <laughs> almost immediately. Well, as, as soon as he started kind of – it seemed unintentional, but since he, he started flirting with, with Madison kind of more – like, or at least considering it when he's in the car with her, he's very insistent to give her a ride home. And he always runs her over because he's checking out some other random girl. Yeah. <laughs> Which, Okay. Uh, but then he's very insistent to give her give her a ride home, and he says that he's he's handy all over the place, and gives her like a kind of a cocky smile. I and then you know the next day they they kiss in the pool. Yeah. Uh, she she yes she leans in for the kiss, stops and says she's okay with him kissing her. I'm like, well, no duh. But he, I he shouldn't. <laughs> he sh- it was entirely his responsibility to not get into that situation and as soon as he went further or so as soon as he started giving her swimming lessons in her underwear that was a line had been crossed yeah and uh he was irredeemable but later in the film you find out that she was targeting him and had her her sights set on him before she'd even got to the school all the all the newspaper clippings you have to assume that she's had those for a while yeah because she's only been there for like a day (laughs) yeah so uh, even if he hadn't uh, like helped her break into her locker and almost run her over, which how does she orchestrate that? <laughs> oh, do you want to hear something funny? Go for it. All right. So in the original cut, they had her appearing at the most random moments, like she was a ghost. 